Good morning, Canvas kids, and happy Sunday. I hope that you all are doing well. I hope that you're doing something interesting and fun. I'm curious about how you are spending your summer days. I know a little bit. Some of your parents have talked to me about some of the things you're doing. I'd love to hear about what fun things. I know Maddox and his family, the Lindstroms, are playing a lot of board games. I see a lot of board games on Facebook, and I think that's awesome. And I know Seven got to go on a little trip, and I saw that Seven lost teeth. Seven, you have holes in your mouth now. And I know that Riker and Phoenix are doing a lot of fun things in their house all day. And I'm, I see pictures that Miss Candace sends of things that they're doing in, in their homes. And it looks like fun. I would love to hear what your favorite part of summer vacation has been so far. I know for mine, their answer is 100% Florida. They loved being at the beach. So I... I don't even have to ask them to know that their answer would be going to Florida, but they're not here right now, so I can't ask them anyway. <laughs> but I'd love to hear what your favorite thing has been. Okay, now I'm gonna give you the riddle before we start worship because I tend to forget to do it. So I wanna get it out of the way at the beginning so I don't forget. Okay, here is your riddle for this week. I think it's hard. So we'll see if anybody can guess the answer. I am tall when I am young, and I am short when I am old. What am I? I am tall when I am young, and I am short when I am old. What am I? Okay, we'll see if anybody can figure that one out. <laughs> And then if you want to try, post your answer on our Facebook page or have your parents send me a text or an email. And then I'll let, if you're right, I will let your parent know right away. But if you're wrong, I'm just going to say, nope, that's not it. And then you can try to guess again. Okay, so we'll see what you think. Well, this morning we're going to spend some time in a very familiar parable. Maybe other than the prodigal son, it might be one of the most well-known parables out of all of them that Jesus taught. And I'm excited to dig into it with you today because I think that um, we're going to learn, maybe a, get a bigger idea of what Jesus was saying in this parable. Before we do that, we're going to sing together. And because of what we're going to discuss in our parable, I have decided to revisit a song that we just sang last week. We're going to sing This Little Light of Mine again. And the video that I put there for you on the resources page is a little bit different from the one before. So watch it, it has extra verses in it and it's really fun, I think that you'll like it. But um, let's sing it together, just the first verse right now. You ready? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I wanna revisit that idea because Jesus is teaching us through his parables about what the kingdom of heaven looks like and what the citizens of that kingdom look like. And that's us, we are the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We are the people who live in the kingdom of heaven. And so a person living in the kingdom of heaven is the person who lets that light shine, lets the joy and truth and love of Jesus Christ be a part of everything he does. And so as a member of the family of God, I want to let my light shine in a world that doesn't necessarily understand and know the beauty of Jesus. We're going to revisit another song next, and I put the link there for you again. I taught this to you several weeks ago, and so you may have a foggy memory of it in your mind. Um, we're going to sing, They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love, because I get, again, I want to revisit the idea that when we are a kid of the kingdom, we're a kingdom kid, we are known because of the way we love people. That's the one distinguishing factor that um, should be evident in all of the people in God's family. And so we're gonna sing this one together and go watch a video and sing it again as a family later. 
We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We talked a few weeks ago about the word unity, and we sang this song in preparation for that discussion. Remember that unity is the idea of all of us having the same goal, all of us being pulled together for the same thing. And in God's heart, unity is so important that the members of his family would all be driven by one goal, and that is to tell other people about the love that Jesus has for them. That is such a, a an important thing to the heart of God. And in our lesson today, we're gonna to see how that is a central focus of Jesus' parable. So I thought it would be good to sing that together again. And then finally, we're going to sing a song that I used to sing as a kid. Oh my goodness, you guys, when we I was growing up, my mom, who loves to sing, she would drive the car and just start singing songs, and I would sing along with her, and sometimes my siblings would join in, and it would be really loud in the car because we'd all be singing so loud. And I, when I think of this song, I just have beautiful memories of singing it with my family. And it's also really important in our lesson today. And the song is, I have decided. I don't know if you've ever heard the song before. There's a fun video for you with a bunch of kids singing the song, loud and proud, just like I did when I was a kid. And so I hope you'll enjoy learning it with me. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. You'll hear some other verses in this um, video that you see, but I want to get that one basic melody down and learn those words we will be visiting that song again in our unit. So let's learn it together. Watch that video lots and, and then let that become the anthem of your heart. You know, when we decide that we're gonna follow Jesus, we make a decision to pursue him and not anything else. And so we kind of, there's a, a verse in that song that says the world the cross, excuse me, the cross before me, the world behind me. And so that verse, we're going to sing that again in another week. It's the idea that whatever Jesus wants is what we want to follow. And the things that the world wants for us, we want to leave that behind. Choosing to follow Jesus is a decision. And sometimes we make that decision every single day. It's not something we can just make one time and then fall asleep and think everything is okay. It's a decision every morning to say, I'm living my life for God today. I'm a part of God's family. I want to let my light shine and I want people to know that I am his because of the way I love other people. And we decide that every day to do that. And so I sing that song in the back of my mind and I picture my family in the car and my mom singing it loud and my we all just kind of making a lot of ruckus, but it's a beautiful sentence to have in my mind all the time. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Well, this morning we're going to dig into the Good Samaritan. And this is a parable that I know you're familiar with, but we're going to dig a little bit deeper than ever before. And we're going to take a look at one of the reasons Jesus wanted his disciples to hear this parable. And one of the reasons he wanted us, his disciples, to know this truth about God's heart. So you're going to go watch the video, come back, and we're going to dig really deep into this one. So get ready. All right. I'll see you in a minute. 